Anyone interested in any form of kung fu knows that it is a discipline that takes years to perfect. And while it is seriously cool to look at, it is also lethal. It can turn an ordinary person into a deadly weapon. Yet, among all the different types of martial arts there is, one stands out above the rest. The Shaolin Wushu is an incredible form of kung fu that takes more dedication and training than any other martial art. It is not called an extreme style of kung fu for no reason. People dedicate their life to it. They achieve skills that are beyond belief. In this video, you will see why a Shaolin master is undefeated. Before we get started, just a reminder to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications then you will never miss out on anything we post and if you enjoy this video please give us some love by hitting the like button First up, the skill of a light body. Anyone who enjoys martial art movies has seen some forms of this practice being played out on screen. But we all know that those stunts showing people gliding up against walls are acting like gravity is a mere suggestion and are extremely overplayed and unrealistic, right? Or are they? There has been talk of Shaolin masters gliding like little birds or resting against small branches of trees and making no more impact than a butterfly. I'm not sure if that is all true, but what I do know is that Shaolin students practice for hours and years to move and balance in a way that would seem impossible to most of us. The Genshin Chu, or skill of a light body, is trained with the help of a huge clay pot that is filled with water. The students will have a weighted backpack and will then walk along the rim of the pot for hours every single day. For those of you out there that have really great balance, this might seem easy enough. At first, the water is holding down the pot, and the only thing you have to focus on is keeping your balance and not falling off. But each month, this gets harder when a little bit of water is removed from the pot, making it less steady and more weight is added to the backpack. When a student has perfected this and can walk on the rim of an empty pot without falling or tipping the pot, then it gets even harder. The whole process repeats with a wider basket filled with iron chips. Obviously, the basket can fold inward, so it is incredibly hard to learn how to become light. <laughs> Next is the skill of finger punching. Having incredibly strong hands are very important on your way to become a Shaolin master, and a part of this is to make your fingers as strong as iron. It starts light, with students practicing poking things like wood planks and trees to learn how to hold their fingers so that they don't do damage. And students will then begin striking harder with just their fingers. They will eventually leave marks in the trees. All around the Shaolin temple, there are trees with holes in them created by this practice. This means that a Shaolin master would really be able to kill an opponent only using one finger. Using their finger punch on just the right spot would mean death to any opponent. Striking with a foot is another skill they train for. This one might sound like child's play, at least at first. Young students have to use their morning and evening walks to train this skill. They have to kick rocks while walking, and at first these rocks are small, so it sounds easy, right? Until you remember just how painful it can be when you just stub your toe. These young students need to do it over and over again. They kick the rocks like they are soccer balls. And like with all disciplines in Shaolin Kung Fu, it gets harder over time. They need to start kicking harder, they need to kick larger rocks, and eventually boulders. It's strengthens their feet and the muscles that they use to kick, so when they face an opponent in battle, they can take him down with just their feet. One kick at the bottom of his legs will make him fall. Another incredible skill they learn is ringing around a tree. If you see a Shaolin student doing this, you might think it's a peaceful practice of hugging a tree, but it's much more than that. A student wraps his arms around a fully grown tree and squeezes it tightly. He tries to pull this tree out. It sounds pretty impossible, one person with his bare arms pulling out a fully grown, healthy tree, but by the time someone becomes a Shaolin master. He does have the power to uproot and to lift it. The practice strengthens the arm, chest, and stomach muscles, and at first you see no progress being made. It looks like he isn't making any difference on the tree. But then after about a year, you see the student having some impact. He might be able to shake the tree enough by then to see some leaves fall. It takes years of practice for a student to become a master and be strong enough to really make a visible impact on the tree. But what difference can this skill really make in battle? Well, imagine that strength when you go up against the Shaolin master. If he gets another human in that that type of grip, it can end very badly. If he gets hold of his opponent with both arms, the Shaolin Master can create major injuries, even squeezing his opponents to death. <laughs>
The next one sounds pretty funny, the drunk Leela skill. It might sound funny, especially when you happen to be the one that it is inflicted on. They practice this skill by using heavy watering cans and lifting them and walking around like a drunk person. Funny, right? Until it is put into practice. During a fight, the Shaolin fighter will act like he is drunk. Then when the opponent comes closer, the fighter will hold the opponent closer as if lifting him. He doesn't let go until the opponent has a major injury. The training for this skill helps a fighter strengthen his arms and fingers. I think we're getting a pretty good picture of just how strong every Every single part of a Shaolin master's body is. Even their mouths and teeth are incredibly strong. I find it difficult to bite through an apple with my mouth, much less doing kung fu with it. And many of us won't be able to lift an entire table with things on it with our hands, much less with our mouth. But that is just what a Shaolin master can do. He can lift a table with objects on it and even carry it around. It sounds impossible, but strengthening every part of the body is taken very seriously. There is no part that is left untrained. They strengthen their core with the iron bowl technique. This is not your logical gym's core strengthening exercise. Students start by scraping their stomachs. First, they only use their fingers and palms, and later they start to add blades to this. They do this to harden their skin. When it is hardened, they use knives to scrape the stomach area, but they start to add hard blows to the core. Eventually, they say they no longer feel any pain in this area. Then they start to use wooden and later iron hammers for these blows, and if that isn't enough, they take it even further. They start to use battering rams to hit them. It may all seem like a lot of unnecessary torture, and we might not understand it. But by the time that these students become Shaolin masters, they are supposed to have cores of iron. They can withstand incredibly hard blows in battle, and they even say things like cuts and scratches won't penetrate the hard skin that is formed on the stomach area. Another skill that looks incredibly cool is Ji Di Gong, or the method that reveals the truth. It is a skill that is supposed to not only strengthen the skin, bones, and muscles, but also help with flexibility. It starts with 18 somersaults that are maneuvers, or tactical tumbles, where the student moves in a lot of different ways. It is almost as if the student bounces off the ground and turns in ways that completely contort the spine. I guess it also teaches students how to trust themselves. Some of the somersaults are just falling to the stone floor face first and you aren't supposed to flint. And when you have finished and mastered these first 18, then you will graduate into doing 64 more tumble techniques that are even more advanced and of course even more dangerous than the first one. Their entire training regimen seems to focus not only on creating an incredibly strong body, but also in creating a very strong mind to master their own fears. The iron head strengthens their skulls. While most martial arts and other sports forbid headbutting or use helmets to protect the skulls of their contenders, Shaolin Kung Fu takes a different route. They strengthen the bones in their skull by repeatedly hitting the skull with different objects over the years. Like all of the Shaolin skills, they start slow with softer hits and take it up a notch throughout the years until they harden the skull so they almost become superhuman. Each microfracture to the skull is said to heal and to make the skull stronger and stronger. The only problem with that is that they also risk serious injuries to their brain each time. It is definitely one that an untrained person should never try. Shaolin students practice their skills for years. There's a lot more skills than the ones that we have looked at today that go into becoming a Shaolin master. They dedicate their lives to creating incredibly strong bodies and minds and to master the skills that Shaolin Kung Fu is known for. It is incredible to watch, but I must say if that I ever encounter a Shaolin master, I would be running in the other direction. No matter what other fighting master they could come up against, I have no doubt that they would remain undefeated. Thanks for watching.